Hi everyone, today I'm going to guide you through two different inversions. Um, the first one is going to be tripod headstand, and then the second one is going to be supported headstand. So um, there's different opinions on which one's easier, which one's more challenging, because everyone has a different body. So for me personally, I find the tripod headstand to be more stable um, for me to have the navigation of my hands, which have more surface area and more dexterity is easier for me than being on my forearms. Um, but some people find that the forearm uh, variation is more supported. So just play around with both of them. And while going through this, just know to have fun. Uh, don't take yourself so seriously that it's not fun. Don't be down or hard on yourself if you make a mistake or if you fall out because falling out is just as much of a practice as staying in. And if we were all just really exceptional, all these yoga postures, then actually would it be that much fun? It's fun because we see where, we're, um, where we have a deficit and where we can improve. And then with time and practice, we improve. And then when we do it, we're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So just have fun, have an open mind, um, and if it is one of your first times practicing, I would recommend having a clear space because it is possible that you lose your balance and fall out of the pose. So please just go ahead and move all chairs, all tables, all children and animals out of the way so that if you are to fall, you don't fall onto something and have uh, an injury because of that. The other thing I wanna say is that when going upside down, becoming inverted, um, you want to really engage your core. And so just like actually in standing, um, our core is engaged, whether we know it or not, but now we're flipping it over and we're finding the balance on our arms and uh, different extremities. And so we really want to have some core strength. So before you even practice going upside down, I would recommend doing some core work. Um, I have actually a 10 minute core exercise video on here. You know, just your standard sit-ups will work as well, or even a plank. So just go ahead, maybe for a week, for two weeks, for however long you like, do some core work, and that's your precursor to having that stability, that balance, so that you can keep, keep erect and have that balance to go upside down. So the last thing that I'd like to let you know is that when we go upside down, we want to balance on the top of our head. So we're not pushing on our forehead and collapsing into the back of our neck. We're coming right on the crown. So if you had a connection from your tailbone all the way up through the crown of your head, that's where we want to place our head in both of the variations. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first one will be our tripod headstand. And that we will be using our hands and the crown of our head. So between our hands and our head, we are making a triangle shape. And we want to have that triangle shape because a triangle is more stable than a line. So if I had, giving you now an aerial view. So now if I had the crown of my head down and my hands are next to my head, then I'm not going to have as much stability than if my hands were down here. So I want to have some flexion into my wrist so that I can come into that L shape. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to try and talk us through as I am practicing as well. So to get into your tripod headstand, you're going to bring the crown of your head down onto your mat, placing the top of the head down. And then before you even lift the legs, make sure that the hands aren't at the sides of the head, but try and make that triangle shape. Spread your fingers out really wide and grip the mat with your hands as if you're Spider-Man. It's called an Ostabanda and hands lock. So I'm really gripping down into the mat and you can see the, the tension in my muscles change. So I'm not being really relaxed, I'm being really active here. Now with that Ostabanda, you can tuck the toes under and lift the knees, starting to walk the feet in towards the hands. Now I've created my Chaturanga arms or my L-shaped arms and again, they're really active, and I can lift in place a knee on the back of my tricep because I've created a shelf. Now, using my drissy, my gaze is out in front of me. I can start to lift my second knee onto the back of my arm, pulling my heels in towards my glutes and engaging everything. So here, I can just stay and 
work with this, finding my stability. Now, if I feel pretty secure here, then I can bring my knees off my arms and in towards my chest, keeping my heels towards my glutes, staying in this tight little ball. If I still feel secure, one leg at a time, I'm going to extend up towards the ceiling so that I can do this slowly, find my balance, and then really push down into the ground. Now from here, I can play around if I like, but I'm doing everything slowly, with intention, and before I become too fatigued, I'm going to slowly come back out of this. All right? And then feet down to the ground, or maybe the knees back down to the mat. All right, so that's our first option. So that is our, support, our tripod headstand. So using my hands and the crown of my head. All right, second option is that supported headstand or Salamba Sushasana in Sanskrit. So with that supported headstand, I'm going to interlace my fingers. Now I still have a triangle shape. In the first variation, it's my hands in the crown of my head. Here, it's my elbows. So I don't want my elbows to be again in a line and I don't want them to be too narrow that at my foundation, I don't have enough surface area to find the stability. So I want my elbows to be at a triangle. So from here, I'm going to place the hands and clasp them around my head. Now, one thing I actually forgot to mention uh, in the last variation, in both of these variations, I'm pushing so actively down into the ground that it's as if I'm lifting my head away from the ground. And many people are actually able to do that. Uh, it depends on the day for me. So that I'm not putting all the pressure and weight onto my head. I'm really pushing the ground away in either variation so that my head is not bearing most of the weight, okay? So even though my hands are clasped, going to be clasped around my head and my elbows are going to be on the ground as well as my forearms, I'm pushing that mat away and I'll do it and then I'll show you so you can probably see that engagement. So I'm protracting, or as if I'm patting my back to push that ground away instead of dropping everything down. So here's what that will look like. Again, interlace your fingers, bring them in that triangular shape, and I'm gonna start here, and then I'm gonna place the crown of my head, not my forehead, down onto the mat. I want this to be nice and stable. And from here, instead of dumping down and being really relaxed, I start to push that ground away. So here I'm protracting. My head is actually lifted away from the ground. It's not even on the ground yet. And then from here, same thing. I can tuck my toes under. I'm actually going to shift my ring so real quick. There we go. So I'm going to protract, push that ground away, and then lift my knees. Starting to walk my feet in towards my core. Now I don't have the shell. Ooh, so one leg at a time, I will lift and bring it in towards my glutes. Again, I can stay here, or one leg at a time, extend up towards the sky. And then you want to come out again. Nice and slowly, with control, down onto the ground. Now, just like all the other poses, we have good days and we have bad days. Some days we have more stability, and other days we fall out. Again, it's a practice. So when you have a day where you're just nailing, you're like, yes, that was awesome, so much clarity, so much stability, so much to be proud of. But even being proud of yourself, on all the days that it's a little bit off. I would say that was, those weren't my best ones today. But you know what? I'm having fun. I'm giving it my best for today. And every day changes. It's not about getting it perfect every time. It's about practice and progress. And slow progress is still progress. So I hope this helps you find a little bit of playtime, a little bit of more um, stability and safety while doing it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Take care, guys.